On October 29, 2022, the Astros beat the Phillies 5-2 in the second game of the World Series. But while baseball fans were focused on Jordan Alvarez, Kyle Schwarber, and Fran Valdez, something more incredible than anything accomplished by the players was going on right before our eyes, and most of us didn't even know it. Home plate umpire Pat Holberg was calling a perfect game, meaning no blown strikes and no blown balls. You might be rolling your eyes at the idea that Holberg's performance was better than anything that happened on the field, but you shouldn't be. According to the online database Umpire Scorecards, Pat Holberg's perfect game was the first ever recorded in the seven years since umpire performance started being tracked. While Holberg's jam might seem like a victory for umpires, the reality is, it's the opposite. It means that unless Game 2 of the 2022 World Series was the first and only professional baseball game you've ever watched, and even if you've barely watched professional baseball at all, it's a virtual certainty you've witnessed an MLB umpire blow a call. Speaking of which, if you're watching Game 3 of the 2018 ALDS between the New York Yankees and Boston Red Sox, it's not just a certainty you saw one missed call, it's a certainty you saw three, and all by the same umpire. Worse yet, or at least more embarrassingly for the umpire in question, all three of those blown calls were overturned by replay review, live on national TV, so there was no possible argument to be made that anyone but the umpire who blew the calls was at fault. How did that umpire, the one and only Angel Hernandez, respond? Was he bashful after his gross act of professional incompetence? Was he apologetic for making three horrific mistakes, any of which just a few years earlier, before replay review, would have upended the competitive balance of a playoff series between the two biggest rivals in American sports, dashing the dreams of countless players, not to mention ruining the product for fans? No. Angel Hernandez was not bashful. No, he did not apologize. Instead, he sued the MLB for discrimination when they decided he shouldn't be rewarded for this atrocious performance by getting the umpire of the 2018 World Series too. Four years later, the lawsuit remains under appeal, just like how Angel Hernandez remains an MLB umpire. So what does this all tell us? The constancy of bad calls in the MLB, the scarcity of consequences for the umpires who make them. There's an umpiring problem in the major leagues, folks, and it's about time we solved it. Well, not us exactly. This is solely a job for Major League Baseball. But before we get into that, I'd like to shout out today's sponsor, The Last Out. A documentary from Michael Gassert and Oscar-nominated filmmaker Sammy Khan, The Last Out attempts to tackle the difficult subject of Cuban baseball players trying to make their way to America to play in the major leagues. Check out this short trailer for the film. Good job. When I came out of Cuba, it was a color of rose that painted the world. That I would improve, to help my family. I think it was a lie what he was saying. There's plenty of players everywhere, but they look for the type of a kid that people will fall in love with, a hero. Again, the movie is the last out, and it's streaming right now. I'll leave details in the pinned comment and description on how you can watch the movie today. Now. Back to our video. For as long as baseball has existed, meaning dating back all the way to the 1840s, umpires have been part of the game. Those umpires have always been human, and humans aren't perfect, so no reasonable person has ever argued that umpires should never make a bad call. Right off the bat, I want to make it clear that I'm not here to argue that either. Umpiring is hard, and people are mean to umpires, which is hard too. The trouble is, this argument is often used to distract from the fact that MLB does have an umpiring problem, and it's systemic. Which means, to solve it, we need a new system. Let me explain. As we learned from Pat Holberg's perfect game, there are good umpires in the MLB. A lot of them, actually. As we learned from Angel Hernandez, there's more in him coming, by the way. There are bad umpires in the MLB as well. Where does this leave us? In the simplest possible terms, to solve its problem, the MLB needs to get rid of the bad umpires and replace them with good umpires. But of course, nothing is actually that simple. And even in a league where MLB players are cut from rosters at the drop of a hat for the slightest dip in production, to be replaced with the best possible alternative, things are very, very different for umpires. See, the existence of the all-powerful Umpires Union, officially the Major League Baseball Umpires Association, makes cutting umps for poor job performance just about impossible. If bad umpires can't be cut, they can't be replaced. Without better umpires replacing worse umpires, umpiring will not improve. We're about to get more specific about the issues with the MLB's broken system, but I wanted to cover that point first. The point that nothing can actually get better if bad umpires can't be replaced, because the next topic we're going to cover is often used as a sort of smokescreen to distract from the real problem, which is a lack of accountability, and we'll cover it in more detail soon. Essentially, fixing the umpiring issue boils down to two challenges. It's almost impossible to become an MLB umpire. It's almost impossible to get fired from being an MLB umpire if you somehow even manage to become one. Let's look first at issue number one, how hard it is to become an MLB umpire. 
The path to becoming an MLB umpire begins at one of three places. The Jim Evans Academy of Professional Umpiring in Colorado, the Harry Wendelstadt Umpire School in Michigan, or the Umpire School in Florida. All three academies offer umpiring crash courses that take about a month and cost about $2,500. Without graduating from one of them, a potential umpire will never be given a job in the minor leagues, much less the majors. So long as candidates meet the physical requirements of professional umping and have 2,500 spare bucks laying around, just about anyone can take these courses. But here is where it starts getting competitive almost immediately. At the completion of an umpiring course, only the very best students, this judgment is made by the instructors, are recommended for umpiring jobs at the lowest levels of minor league baseball. And when I say very best students, I'm talking the top 10, maybe 15% of a class. Which means, of course, the bottom 85% just blew $2,500 for nothing. And it doesn't get easier. Let's say you are one of the top 15%, and you do get recommended for one of these minor league umpiring jobs. Congratulations! You're about to have the worst seven years of your life. Just like ball players, umpires have to work their way up through the minor leagues, but with a far lower chance of skipping grades than ball players, and a far smaller payoff even if they do make the show. MLB umps generally make between two and 400k by the way. Add to that, the minor league system does not, as many casual fans believe, consist solely of AAA, AA, and single A. The reality is, there are six levels of minor league ball. Rookie, Class A short season, Class A, Class A advanced, AA, and AAA. And umpires have to work their way through every single one. Then, in the rare event a minor league ump makes it all the way to AAA, a task that usually takes at least seven years, there's absolutely no guarantee they will ever even umpire a single game in the big leagues, let alone become a full-time MLB ump. In fact, the odds are overwhelming they'll never do either. Why? It's a simple question of math. Major League Baseball employs exactly 76 full-time umpires, whereas thousands are active every year in the minors. Worse, the turnover rate amongst MLB umpires is incredibly low, with, on average, a grand total of one full-time MLB umpiring job opening up per season. While about 15 AAA umps will be called up at some point in the MLB season to make a spot start for a regular who's on vacation or whatever, it barely matters how good of an impression the spot started umpire makes. If there's only one job opening up per year, and you're one of the top 15 AAA umpires with more or less equal claim to it, you're probably not going to get the job. And remember, those AAA umps are the ones who've been doing well in this system. That leaves well more than a thousand umpires in any given year spread out amongst the endless levels of minor league baseball who will never even sniff a AAA umping gig, much less one in the major leagues. And if those weren't enough obstacles in the path of prospective MLB umpires, I haven't even mentioned that their salaries are comically low. It depends what level the minor leagues an umpire is operating at, but an average of $2,000 a month and only during baseball season is what they can expect. That about does it for the reasons it's hard to become an MLB umpire, but now I'm going to do something a little weird by pretty much invalidating everything I just told you. Not because it wasn't true, it was all true, at least according to my research, but because virtually none of what I just covered is actually relevant to the MLB umpiring problem. Sure, it's unpleasant to become an MLB umpire, and because it's unpleasant, fewer people attempt it, and fewer people attempting it will ultimately result in a smaller pool of the sort of outstanding ump we'd all like to see calling every MLB game. But let's pretend for a moment that being an MLB umpire is the best gig in the world. Massive salary, unlimited per diem, clout for days. It wouldn't matter. Yes, we'd end up with better minor league umpires, because there'd be a larger talent pool, but what would that do for major league baseball, which is what we all care about anyway? Nothing. It would do nothing at all, or at least next to nothing, because it doesn't matter how many good umpires are waiting in the wings for their shot at umping in the big leagues. As long as there are 76 umpires, and an average of only one retiring and one getting hired per year, every year the MLB will bring back almost exactly the same group of umps it did before. Those umps will continue to perform at the level they did before, meaning badly. They won't all be bad, but a lot of them will, and there won't be anything to be done about it at all. Now, this is actually a particularly important point in this moment in time, because at the end of 2022, it was finally announced that minor league umpires will receive that long-awaited pay raise. Nothing crazy, but on average they'll make around $4,000 a month beginning in 2023, which is at least livable in some areas. But I want to be very, very clear that this does not solve the real problem. The real problem is accountability, or a lack of accountability which all comes back to the Major League Baseball Umpires Association, that all-powerful umpires union. I'm not here to bash on unions. The job of labor unions is to advocate for their members, and nothing else, no matter what. This is exactly what the umpires union does. The MLB UA uses every resource at its disposal to conceal the mistakes made by its members, to deflect, to shift blame, and most of all, to protect MLB umpires from accountability. It doesn't matter to the union if this is bad for the game of baseball, because the game of baseball is not a union member. Only the umpires are. Now let me get a little more specific about the sort of tactics I'm talking about with that kind of talk of shifting blame and deflecting accountability. 
Remember that Angel Hernandez terrible ALDS game with three blown calls? Well, it was just one of many terrible showings, perhaps none so frustrating as what occurred on April 28, 2022, when Hernandez called balls and strikes for the Phillies and Brewers. From start to finish, Angel was god-awful, missing calls in every corner of the zone, ringing up Kyle Schwarber on a ridiculously low and outside fastball, and even calling a strike against Gene Segura that missed by about six and a half inches inside. After the game, Ump Scorecards, whose ball and strike data is publicly available and completely transparent, gave Hernandez an accuracy grade of 88% for the game, way below the MLB average of 94%. But the really infuriating part wasn't Angel's performance, it was how the MLB responded by releasing their own grade, which awarded Hernandez a preposterous 96% accuracy score, a full 8 points better than Ump Scorecards publicly available data suggested, and providing no pitch by pitch data to back it up. MLB fans, of course, the ones that cared, were incensed, which was fair, but they should not have been confused, because there's actually quite a simple explanation for this, and it's also the perfect example of what's wrong with the current system. Whereas UMP Scorecards uses a grading model that's based exclusively on getting each pitch right, the MLB's grading system deliberately tips the scale in favor of umpires, by including an enormous 2-inch margin of error to mask bad calls. This means an ump can blow a call, and as long as you didn't blow up by more than two inches, only slightly less than a baseball's full width, the MLB's official report still says the ump got the call right. In real life, this looks like Angel Hernandez blowing 12% of his calls across an entire game, yet receiving a grade suggesting his accuracy was 96%. I'm sure you're wondering, why does the MLB grade umpires like that? They couldn't possibly want to sacrifice the integrity of their product with crappy umping, then have to come out and lie to the fans about it, right? That's right. The 2 inch margin of error has nothing to do with the MLB, and everything to do with the umpire's union, as the inclusion of this ridiculously generous margin of error was a massive sticking point in the most recent round of contract negotiations, and ultimately, the MLB folded. And there are so many examples of this sort of thing. How about the fact that the public gets to see the official stats of baseball players, but not for baseball umpires? How about the fact that when an MLB player gets fined for violating league policy, usually regarding his demeanor on field, the whole world gets to learn how much that player has to pay, so they can determine if it's a reasonable consequence. But when an umpire gets fined for the same reasons, the public never learns how much, and rarely that it happened at all. In the end, everything comes back to the same issue. The livelihood of MLB players is based on their on-field performance, which not only guarantees their top priority will be to perform as well as possible, it guarantees that whoever is playing the MLB at any given time is there because they deserve it, or at least they deserved it very, very recently, based on how good they were at playing baseball. The livelihood of MLB umpires, however, is not based on their on-field performance. In fact, the umpires union, which of course is run by umpires, does everything it can to keep the public from knowing what umpires' performances are. If umps do not need to rely on their job performance to keep their jobs, then umps who perform badly will not be replaced with umps who perform better. So what can we take away from this? How could it be fixed? In my opinion, the only solution is to make more umping stats mainstream, whether by third party means or not, thereby putting on a pedestal who's a decent game caller and who needs a one-way ticket back to Scranton or Tulsa. Then hopefully, through these evolving optics, the union will be forced to allow some wiggle room for turnover. It doesn't need to be much. An open slot number of four would quadruple the current rate, making for a much smoother system of accountability overall, and edge MLB in the direction of having the best umpiring humanly possible. At least, until we start seeing robo-umps. Then things are going to change exponentially very quickly. But that's a story for another day.